Hi, this is Tony, and this is another video presentation for you on my YouTube channel and also on my Odyssey channel. The title of this presentation today is Phoenician Sardinia, the problematic Nora inscription, I-46. And this inscription dates from around 880 BC. The Nora stone inscription, or otherwise called Stele of Nora, is present in the Museo Archeologico Nazionale in Cagliari, in Italy, in the island of Sardinia, which is part of Italy. This inscription dates from around 880 BC. Some other authors say that it's from 850 BC, but it's from the 9th century BC. And this is another image uh, with a closer look on the inscription. And if you like, we can try to decipher the letters together. So this is the first letter is the letter Bet. It's not very clear. And then here we have the Tav. Here we have the Resh. Here we have the Sheen. And here we have another Sheen. This letter is Noon. This letter is Gimel. This letter is Resh. This letter is Sheen, this letter is He, and this letter is the Aleph letter. This letter is Bet, this letter is Sheen, this letter is Rash or Resh, this letter is Dalet, this letter is Noon, and this letter is Sheen. This letter is Lamed, this letter is Mim, this letter is He, like this one here. And this is another Aleph, like the Aleph here. This is a she, uh, Sheen, like the letter here and here and here. Uh, this uh, letter here, which is not very clear, is the letter Lamed. This is the letter Mim. This is the Tzade. This is Bet. This is Aleph. This is Mim. This is Lamed. This is Kaf. This is Taf. This is noon. This letter is bet, and this is noon. Here, I don't think there is a letter. This letter here is a letter sheen. This is a letter bet, like the letter here, similar uh, uh, looking uh, letters. Uh, this letter here is um, not very clear, but I think it's a uh, noon. This letter is also a noon. This letter is a resh. No, sorry, it's a gimel. And this letter here is a resh. This letter is a lamed. This letter is a p. This letter is a mim. And this letter is yod. This is the Nora Steely uh, inscription uh, as I copied it myself. And we can see here the letter bet, letter tav, resh, shin, shin, noon, gimel, resh, shin, he, aleph, bet, shin, resh, dalet, noon, shin, lamed, mim, he, aleph, shin, lamed, Mim, Sade, Bet, Aleph, Mim, Lamed, Kaf, Tav, Nun, Bet, Nun, Shin, Bet, Nun, Nun, Gimel, Dalet, Lamed, Pe, Mim, and Yod. I've added dots here uh, to uh, separate the words we will review that later on so we have here in this inscription the lines so how many lines there are in this inscription i think the obvious lines are eight lines so letters spread on eight uh, lines when and how this stele was discovered the discovery of the stone was announced in 1774 in the journal Ephemeridi Letterarie di Roma, 
which published a letter sent by Giovanni Bernardo de Rossi, then professor of Oriental languages at the University of Parma, to Giovanni Cristofano Amadusi, professor of Greek language at the Sapienza University of Rome. It was discovered by Giacinto Hintz, professor of sacred scripture and Hebrew slash oriental languages at the University of Cagliari in a secondary location, incorporated in a dry stone wall near the apes of the Chiesa di Sant'Efisio outside of Pula, Sardinia, immediately adjacent to what became known as the archaeological site of Nora. The top of the stone is quite irregular, as if a portion had been broken off. It appears that the first line or two of this inscription are missing. As I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, presentation today, the Nora inscription is a very problematic one. Different scholars um, had uh, uh, different uh, interpretations and translations for it. Here in this slide, I'm going to give you two translations, with the first one by Peckham, who was active from 1968 until he died in 2008, and then also um, Cross, um, which, who translated this inscription in 1972. Both uh, scholars agreed that uh, this inscription is incomplete and about one or two lines are missing from the beginning of this uh, stone. So let us start with the Peckham uh, uh, translation and interpretation of this inscription. First line, he read it as B Tarshish, from Tarshish. Ugarashuhu, he was driven. Gisharden, Shilemhu, in Sardinia, he found refuge. Shilem, Sabau. His forces found refuge. Milkuton ben Shabon. Milkuton, son of Shabon. Nogid le Pumai, the commander to the god Pumai, le Pumai. So this is Peckham interpretation. Cross uh, translation. He thinks, so the first line was he fought. So I added it as who lehem with the Sardinians, Ayat Shardinim. This is my addition. This is what I think was there based on what uh, Cross um, has uh, mentioned. Let's repeat. U lehem, he fought, ayat shardinim, with the Sardinians, di Tarshish, so he translated it as at Tarshish, ugarashu, and he drove them out. Visharden, ish, among the Sardinians, Shilem who he is now at peace. Shilem Sabau and his army is at peace. Milkaton Ben Shubuna or Shebna Nogid Le Pumai of King Pumai, General of King Pumai. So let's repeat. Hu lehem, he fought, ayat shardinim, with the Sardinians, bi tarshish, at tarshish, ugarash hu, and he drove them out, bi sharden, esh, shin, here is shilem, bi sharden shilem hu, among the Sardinians he is now at peace, Chilem Sabau, and his army is at peace. Milkaton, translated it as Milkaton, Ben, Milkaton, son of Shubna or Shebna, 
no guide general le pumai of king pumai in this slide i'm going to give you a third uh, interpretation and translation of this uh, phoenician inscription this time is by jg Février from 1950 and this is the translation that was adopted by fadi stefan in his book les inscriptions phéniciennes et leur style publication de l'université libanaise uh, dating from 1985. And this reads, I've written it to you in, modi in the modified Latin alphabet and also in Hebrew uh, letters. It reads, first line, Bet resh ish. Bet resh ish. Nogar ishu. Nogar ishu. Bisharden. Bisharden. Chilemhu Chilemhu Chilem Saba Miloket Nibnet Ish Bane Nogar La Pumai I repeat Betresh Ish Nogar Ishu Bisharden, Chilem Hu, Chilem Tsaba, Miloket, Nibnet, Ishbane, Nogar La Pumai. Betresh, Ish Nogar, Ishu Bisharden, Chilem Hu, Chilem Tsaba, Miloket, Nibnet ish bane nogar la pumai. This is another uh, reading of the same inscription as translated by uh, Février in 1950, and this is the uh, translation that was adopted by Fadi Stefan. So we read transliteration. Betresh ish, first line. Nogar ishu, second line. Bicharden shilem hu. Shilem tsaba, third person, fifth line. Miloket, sixth line. Nibnet ish bane nogar, seventh line. La pumai, eighth line. Again, I repeat. Betresh ish, nogar ishu bicharden, shilem hu. Shilem Tsaba Miloket Nibnet Ich Bane Nogar La Pumai. Here I'm going to give you a French translation and an English translation of Février's interpretation of this Phoenician inscription. And in French it reads Temple principal que Nogar, qui est à ou en Sardaigne, a édifié complètement. Lui a mené à bout la tâche d'œuvre de construction, construction qu'a construite Nogar en l'honneur de Pumé. An English translation would read, The main temple that Nogar, who is in Sardinia, built completely, it is he who completed the work of building, construction that Nogar built in honor of Pumé. In this slide, I'm going to provide you with yet another interpretation and translation of this same Phoenician inscription. This time it is by Charles Kramalkov, who is in a way my boss. I have most of his books on the Phoenician language, grammar, and his book on the uh, Phoenician or his Phoenician dictionary. And therefore I'm indebted to him with most of my knowledge in everything that's Phoenician. I am therefore going to adopt his translation as the official translation and interpretation of this inscription with all my respects uh, to the other authors and scholars. Charles Kramalkov believes, like the other scholars, that this inscription is incomplete and 
one of two lines at the beginning, at the top of the stone, are missing. And he uh, kind of interpret them or uh, think that they were as follows. So I'm going to read it to you. I in modified I've written it to you in modified Latin alphabet in the Hebrew alphabet and then in transliteration. And then I'm going to give you an English translation of it. So in the modified Latin alphabet, the inscription reads Nibnu ki mitzap Tarshish Nigroshu hu bisharden Shilem ha itle mitzap Imlu kiton Bunne eshbon Nogidlu humai Gramalkov believes that this inscription dates from 850 BC. This is the same inscription in uh, same uh, using the Hebrew alphabet. Nibnu ki mitzab Tarshish Nigroshu hu bisharden Shilem ha'it le mitzab Imlu kiton Bunne eshbon Nogidlu humai Transliteration Nibnu ki mitzab tarshish Nigroshu hu bisharden Chilem ha ich le mitzab Imlu kiton Bunne eshbon Nogidlu humai An English translation would read Refounded here is the colony of Tarshish It, the original colony, was driven out from Sardinia May the people of, the co of this colony prosper its mother city is Kition. The founder is Eshbon. Its leader is Pumai. Nora Stili, uh, Kramalkov translation. Here I'm going to give you uh, uh, a translation in Italiano to please my Italian friends. And since this inscription was found on in Sardinia on Italian ground, a French translation and then an Arabic translation. So let us start with the Italian translation. Rifondata qui è la colonia di Tarsis. Essa, la colonia originaria, fu cacciata dalla Sardegna. Posta la gente di questa colonia prosperare. La sua città madre è Kishion. Il fondatore è Esbon. Il suo capo è Pumai. A French translation would read: Refondée ici est la colonie de Tarsis. Elle, la colonie d'origine, a été chassée de la Sardaigne. Puisse le peuple de cette colonie prospère. Sa ville mère est Kition. Son fondateur est Eshbun. Son chef est Pumai. In Arabic, Pays de Tarsis. أعيد تأسيس مستعمرة ترشيش هنا تم طردها أي المستعمرة الأصلية من سردينيا وتمنى أن يزدهر أهل هذه المستعمرة مدينتها الأم هي كيتيون المؤسس هو أشبون رئيسها هو بوما Comments on the Nora inscription The Nora Stili, in my opinion, is the most problematic Phoenician inscription of all I have provided you here with four different interpretations and translations of this same Phoenician inscription. The difficulty with the Nora Stili is that in the first instance is incomplete. It includes letters in eight lines with no separating spaces or marks, like for example, with the Urbox Phoenician inscription that we uh, discussed in the previous uh, video presentation. Some words also could be found on two different lines. Being kind of a student of Charles Kramalkov, I have chosen his interpretation and translation uh, for this inscription. And to be fair, his translation appears to be the most appropriate one, at least for me. Once again, I would like to mention that without Biblical Hebrew, Kramalkov, like the other uh, authors or scholars, uh, relied heavily on Biblical Hebrew words in order to translate and arrive at an interpretation of this uh, inscription. 
So without biblical Hebrew, the sister language of Phoenician, most of the Phoenician inscriptions could not be fully understood. Comments on the Nora inscription, Phoenician vocabulary. What vocabulary can we um, learn from this inscription? The first word I've chosen to you today is the word Tarshish. Tarshish. It is the same in Hebrew and it was mentioned in the Bible. Tarshish uh, was a colony, a Phoenician colony in Spain. But as you know, uh, many colonies or Phoenician colonies bear uh, the same name. So there might be also a Phoenician colony called Tarshish that was present in Sardinia and another one in uh, Spain, but the main one was in Spain. Carthage was the main colony in uh, uh, in Tunisia, but there were other colonies named Carthage across the Mediterranean. So Tarshish is very important uh, word, and it was mentioned in the Bible. And one of the famous stories is the story from the Bible is the story of uh, Prophet Jonah, who, when God asked him to go to Nineveh to preach uh, to the uh, the Syrians, who were the arch enemies of Israel, uh, instead of going to Nineveh as God has ordained him or ordered him to do so, he uh, went, uh, took a boat and went to Tarshish in Spain to went to the west instead of going to the east. And uh, you all know the story of uh, Jonah. Uh, the second word is the word mitzab, mitzab. Matzab, meaning steely, garrison, or outpost. Here is mainly garrison or outpost. Mitzbat in Phoenician is for steely. Mitzbat. Mitzab is more for garrison or outpost. Nigroshu, nigroshu from garash, similar in Hebrew, meaning to expel, to drive out. Charden. Charden, Sardinia, Sardaigne in French. This appears to be the first time in history that the name of the island is mentioned. Although Charden in this inscription most likely refers to a city rather than the whole island, it may be that the name of this city became somehow the name of the whole island. So the first time Sardinia is mentioned, it was mentioned in this Nora inscription by the Phoenicians in 1880 BC. Shebon or Eshbon. Uh, this is how, uh, again, uh, my boss um, Kramalkov interpreted uh, this word. Uh, he interpreted it as Eshbon, and he thinks that it derives from Eshmun, the name of the god Eshmun. Im or M meaning mother, same in Hebrew, same in Arabic, and same also in spoken Lebanese. Kiton, in other inscription, it is written Kitty, Kitty, rather than Kiton. It's the name of a Phoenician colony in Cyprus. And uh, you know I have uh, uh, produced several presentations about the city of Kiton and the uh, famous uh, Astate uh, inscription or Temple Taref inscription of Kition. Comments on the Nora inscription, more Phoenician vocabulary. The next word we're going to talk about is the word Nogid, Nun Gimel Dalet. It's a masculine name, Nogid. Nagid in Hebrew means leader, commander. The same uh, letters, Nun Gimel Dalet, also could be read as neged, which means in Hebrew and Phoenician as opposite or facing each other. Pumai, Pumai is a Cypriot god, god from Cyprus. Likely the name of Adonis or Baal in Cypriotic. Pumai here is a short form of the theophoric name, which usually also includes a verb. Like, for example, the, the, the name Pumai Yehaweyo, Pumai Yehaweyo, 
Umay grant him a long life. Umayaton is the most common name, uh, theophoric name using uh, Umay. Umayaton, Umay grant or Baal grant. Umay Yitzorka, Umay Yitzorka, Umay protect you. So this is the word Pumai. Another word that we find in this inscription is the word Saba, Saba, which is the word in Phoenician and Hebrew for army, for militia, for force. Plural word is Sabaot, Sabaot. Same in Hebrew, as I said. It's one of the titles of God, of God in the Bible. And it is also preserved and used in the same form in Latin. We say Deus Sabaoth. Deus Sabaoth meaning the God of forces. Saba. Another word or a double word is Shilem Ha'ish. Shilem Ha'ish, long live the man or the people of this colony. Shilem Ha'ish. Bune, from the Bana, which means to build, meaning here builder. It's an active participle. Final comments on the Nora inscription, contrasting the past with the present. The Nora inscription dates from 880 BC, that is 2,902 years ago, almost three millennia ago. What is obvious from this inscription is a strong social cohesion among the Phoenicians of Sardinia, who despite their defeat in the colony of Chardin, quickly founded a new colony on the same island. We realize from this founding stele the level of organization that existed in the past among the Phoenicians with the hierarchy of people, mother city, founder and leader. But above all, we see an emphasis on the common good of the people of the colony named first with a long-lived shout, Shilem Ha'ish Lemitzab. Contrast this to the present situation in my home country, Lebanon, with the total collapse of the state, with no government, no president, and no regard whatsoever for the common good of the people. Contrast this to my adoptive country, New Zealand, where this government is setting citizens to spy and report their neighbors who refuse to blindly adopt the current thing imposed by the Novus Ordo Seculorum and the World Economic Forum. And we dare say that we are more civilized in 2022. I wish I could go back in time and live in such a colony and under such a Phoenician organization and leadership. This is the uh, Nora Steely inscription and the final reading uh, of it. Um, in this um, inscription as copied by me, the two first lines are missing. And I'm going to read them. Um, the two, first two lines are Nibnu ki mitzab. We have the bet of the last letter of the mitzab. Nibnu ki mitzab parshish. Nigroshu hu bi sharden, chilem ha it le mitzab, em lu kiton, bunne eshbon, nogid lu humai. Repeat it again, so this is the last reading. Nibnu ki mitzab, the bet of mitzab. Tarshish, nigroshu hu bi sharden, chilem ha ish le mitzab. Im lu kiton bunne eshbon nogid lu umai. Final comments. Thank you for watching this video presentation. See you next time with another video presentation about another Phoenician inscription. I hope to be able to produce one video for you before the end of the year. Otherwise, it will be uh, at the, in the first months of the new year. May God bless and protect you all. Shalom unahat lakilchom. Shalom unahat lakilchom.
peace and quietness to you all. Thank you again for watching my videos and see you next time. These are my references for this uh, presentation. Thank you again.